All right, for this live duel exhibition, we have Tom Scrub playing the Draco Pals versus PK Fire's pilot, Corbin Scrub One. Why am I calling ourselves Scrubs? Because we suck with these decks. Well, not that we suck with these decks, but this is actually our first time having this matchup uh, against each other. And I actually don't exactly know what PK Fire does. And although I recently started playing it on the stream, man, PK Fire is such a great deck. It's just so much resources all just replenishing constantly. And as for Draco Pals, I don't think this deck needs any more introduction than it does. Waiting for the ban list to see what, if anything changes. But so far, uh, I guess I am going first. This is a sided game, so both players have sided uh, from, I guess, their side deck, of course. So extra max C's, extra twin twisters have been placed in. So Ariadne on the scale and summon and set one past turn. Not exactly the best opening on Tom Scrub, so I'm scrubbing out right at the get-go. So good at scrubbing out, Tom. What's wrong with you? So yes, I will be referring to myself in the third person on some occasions when I do stupid shit. Yes, I'm contemplating the plays I want to make because it's terrible. This is actually a pretty bad hand. Not much that can be done. And Corbin opens with the Twin Twister, sending the Dusty Cloak, hitting the one solemn scolding. Chain scolding, negating it because it's free. Why not? Ariadne's on scale, guys. Might as well get the most out of it. So Terror Top has been special summoned. Uh, Takitomborg, Speedrun Takitomborg is being added to hand and will eventually be special summoned. Question, what, is there a Max C? Max C should be dropped by now. Just don't let him get that play, don't let him get that play. If you see something like this happen, especially like Teratop, Teratop is such a, is another tour guide, in, in my opinion. And in a lot of people's opinion, it is a tour guide. It's just... It has multiple steps. Rather than summoning straight to the field, you add it to your hand to special summon again. Uh, but it's better than tour guide in the sense that the summon that you bring him out with is a special summon. It doesn't eat your normal, so there's the advantage there. No. Dusty Cloak has added the glove to hand. Perhaps he already has the boots. Boots would be quite scary. That could be a double Dante play. Now, so Takitomborg is a public knowledge card, just confirming. Now he has a Lure of Darkness in hand. So Takitomborg has been special summoned. Overlaid. Corbin immediately claims he has made a mistake. What that could that mistake be? Is it because he could have done something else with uh, the dusty ropes. Mills a Farfa, Strike, and another Twin Twister. So something to count on uh, PK Fire, Phantom Knight Fire decks. Well, it's not really Fire, but it's like Phantom Knight Burning Abyss deck is that... Ooh, that's a 25 to the face. Okay, so the thing we have to keep uh, in a, an eye for is... How many traps are in the graveyard? How many traps have they expended? The average number of traps is about 7 to 9. Uh, the trap lineup usually ranges from triple solemn strike with the solemn morning and three fog blades. They could be running fire lake, they could be not running fire lake, just keep that in mind. But they can set bluffs versus you. However, the matchup is extremely weak, especially when it comes to getting hit by a twin twister. Getting hit by a twin twister hurts a lot for them. Ariadne has been switched to defense mode, set 1. And past turn. Not much happening on the Draco Pal side, Tom Scrub. What are you doing? You scrubbing out? Are you bricking? Did you get a brick? So Dante is going back into attack mode. Effect of Dante is going through once again, milling another three cards. Let's see what he hits. I believe that's a Farfa. Is that Farfa? I'm not sure if it was a Farfa. No, it was a Skarm. Skarm, Strike, and a Warning. Oh man, terrible mills all round on. <laughs> Corbin Scrub 1. Milling those traps is actually a very, very big tell uh, on, well, I guess my side, because, well, knowing that he doesn't have uh, very many Solemns and whatnot, he only has one strike left, um, I can already start to perceive, perceive that the back row is all just duds. Maybe bluffs. Even if it's all, like, Phantom, uh, like, the Fog Blade, it's not even that scary at this point. 
because, well, the Fog Blade doesn't do any kind of destruction. It does control my effects, but it's not that bad. So he's passing on a strike uh, into my hand. Getting a shuffle, passing it to cut. I don't know, triple back row. We know that the Allure of Darkness is somewhere in the back row, acting as a bluff to make a miss of things. Miss. I said that on purpose, because I wanna, he wants me to miss my Twin Twister hits. And one of our long-lost buddies have decided to join us today and grace us with his presence <laughs> during the recording of this. However, he's extremely tired. So Skarm and FaZe, of course, gets a nice uh, tour guide. And FaZe draw for turn! So top deck into a Wavering Eyes. However, my hand is made up of... Well, there's one Pendulum card. Okay, uh, well, Twin Twister. Gonna take a little bit of a gamble here. Just hitting random two cards. Hits a... Oh, hits the third strike. There's no back row containing me now. And of course, I threw away uh, my Solemn Strike. Because what's the point of setting a strike when, I'm, when he already established that one Dante that I probably just bait my negation. So I scale... And then I play Wavering. So Ariadne dies with it. However, I only run four counter traps, so I will not be getting the Ariadne search. Perhaps I should increase that number to five. But, you know, it really depends. Because if you play counter traps, you really want to go first. And I did lose the very first uh, try at this, so that's why this is a sided game with me going first. So I added a monkey board. Uh, guessing that that the back row is going to be a fog, uh, a fog blade. So uh, instead of going into the skulker bat joker, just going straight to the lizard. So the lizard's gonna gonna go out. I believe there's a slight misplay that's gonna happen very soon. So fog blade is gonna is gonna happen for sure onto the sorcerer. Can't let me get any more pluses. Alrighty. Sorcery has been negated. Gonna do an overlay here, but what am I gonna overlay into? There are multiple choices. Um, one of the better choices to go into would be... Well, probably go into a Utopia. Sad thing is I can't make two uh, XYZ summons because uh, I can't hit his graveyard. His graveyard does have a few cards in there that I don't want him to fetch back. So overlay the um, the Sorcerer and the Ariadne. It's gonna be this Utopia. No, I'm going into Draco! Draco uh, Magister Paladin, the, so the Soaring Draco Slayer. End phase search! What could the end phase search be? End phase search. I believe my choices were between either getting a Skull Corbat or getting something rather more useful, like a Luster. There are level 4s already in the Pendulum Zone, like in the Pendulum, well, Pendulum Monster wise, I have access to level 4s already, so it's not too bad to add, go into a Luster either. No, I go into another. Nope. 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 Definitely not going into another Sorcerer. There's no point getting a Sorcerer right now. Although popping cards is pretty fun. But, okay, yeah, it's going for the Luster. Luster is very scary. In my hand is a Luster and a Max C, which makes it very hard for Corbin to make any plays now. So the Fog Blade is now a dud card. It's just floating there for no reason. Normal Zum Tour Guide. Effect? Oh, Chain Max C! This makes it a little. Uh, you know, puts uh, Corbin up for the maxi challenge. Is he well? One card's definitely gonna get replenished. Is just that whether or not he wants to continue to commit to this challenge. He could just give me one more card and just end it there, uh, which wouldn't be too bad on his part. But either way, this maxi is definitely the biggest roadblock for Corbin. 
He has to do the summon now. wonder what I'll draw into. So it's going to be a graph. Top deck. Ooh. Off camera. Can't see what that was, but I hope it was exciting. Now, I do remember the second top deck from this maxi. The second top deck from this maxi was another maxi. He will be summoning again. Leaving these cards on board is not very beneficial. He has no sort of aggression whatsoever. So this is the second card. The second card was a maxi. So that's the maxi draw for the pair right there. He hasn't put down his monster yet, so I'm just going to keep the card in front of him. Now what would he go into in this case? So he's going to go into a brick sword. It would be it would be good for him to actually break that uh yeah, he's going to break his uh, Fog Blade and also break the Magister. Magister needs to die because Magister, as he already knows, I do have a uh, Luster in my hand. If I normal summon it and then oh, uh, synchro with it with Ariadne, it's going to be a huge problem. So he's going to attack over Ariadne for the 300 and attack for 1000 with the Dante. And then end phase Dante will go back to defense mode. Wait, end of battle phase, sorry. That Maxi! The biggest problem in the game. Max EOP. So top deck, I believe that was a Vector Pendulum. Um, the Draco Overlord. I don't think nothing. Like, the hand's great. I don't have to be afraid of anything too particular. There's not going to be any kind of Fire Lake right now. Not enough dudes to actually get the Fire Lake off. I am a bit worried for Bottomless Trap Hole. Bottomless Trap Hole is a legitimate card. A lot of decks are running it. And uh, basically getting hit by a... Well, that could end the game for me. So popping off the lizard draw, top decking. I believe in my hand, aside from that monkey board that's still on the scale, there is a high scale, a perhaps a silver claw? Just checking the extra deck, checking everything, checking the resources, making sure everything is available. Apparently my entire hand is upside down. So there is a vector. And there is a Draco face-off. Oh. Uh, just doing a little glare check. Glare check is not good. Glare is pretty bad. We all know that that's a monkey board. We're all good. Yeah. Here we go. Now there... I know that there is something stupid that happens here. So here we go. This is definitely going to be a summon. Overlay that, uh, so it's gonna be a vector. Uh, so Master will be put to the extra deck, and Vector most likely will be summoned out. What's the spell card? Oh, the spell card's a wavering eyes. So if the spell card's a wavering eyes, all I need is just wavering eyes and get another high scale. Now we're gonna we're gonna catch a very, very interesting play here. So. The best course of action would be to scale everything, in my opinion. Because of the fact that I don't have enough scales to actually, uh, because of, first of all, monkey boards already used, and uh, there's no one card scales left in the deck. Popping both scales uh, and needing a high scale afterwards is not going to be the best option for me. I won't be able to re-establish skills by using Wavering Eyes, so I I have to put this uh, vector from the Draco face off to Wavering Eyes. So 500 damage goes to Corbin. Alright, so get a search. I do want to get that uh, Luster Summon out properly. And someone just yells quiet in the background. <laughs> oh, those magic players. It, it was actually a magic event in the background, by the way, guys. So, yeah, I'm going to add a Lizard Draw. No, probably going to go for the Geturtle. Geturtle is probably a better choice right now because I don't want to be tempted to pop it. And, uh, Lizard... Yeah, so there's the Geturtle. So Geturtle has been added to hand. 
And with another vector in my hand, I can easily establish my scale again. So turtle has been played, vector has been played. Pendulum summon's gonna be great. There's gonna be vector master from the extra deck. And maybe, is there anything else? I don't think so. Here we go. I believe there's four monsters to be summoned. With the ending card in my hand being max C. Still fearing for that bottomless trap hole. So bottomless trap hole is like the only thing I'm really scared of. So okay, normal summon out the luster and pendulum summon out three cards. And it was successful. Uh, got overexcited. Not good. So synchro summon into, of course, Ignister. There's no better monster to summon out with him. Using his effect, trying to clear the back row. Of course, what a scrubbed is Tom Box. Oh my god, you're such a scrub. Absolutely scrubbed out right there. Probably could have went to a Diamond Dire Wolf to actually get massive advantage. So I, the effect that was burned was the uh, target a pendulum monster and then spin one card. That, that effect has been burned already. Here, so what's the next line of choices for the extra deck? Probably should have went to a Diamond Dire and spin that... Uh, pop the back row, or force the back row on to, um, basically, yeah, force the back row to target Diamond Dire instead. Nope. However, there is another good play here. Going into Utopia and Utopia Lightning. So this is the recovery play after failing so bad. Ignister is still, like, a decent monster on board. So, uh, using the Utopia play, just attacking... Uh, over the break sword, no effects whatsoever going to happen, and did not use the effect, so that was only 500 damage to go through. Now remember, the Ignister cannot be attacked to Fogblade because Fogblade does not allow the monster to be targeted for attack. With a Max C in hand, this is going to be, uh, I guess, an interesting challenge for him. So with the Max C in hand. Gonna be quite tough for Corbin to play out of it. He apparently has a Ghost Ogre in the hand, I believe. I don't think that Ghost Ogre is gonna be enough. Probably could it could kill the Ignister. I think Utopia actually did a severe number of damage to to Corbin. He didn't he, like he wasn't able to refetch his uh I guess his monster's back. I believe there was a graph under him, so the graph died for free. So, the biggest issue right now is that Ignister cannot be attacked. He wants to crash his, uh, his Dante for sure. I think there is a Terror Top in his hand. And with while controlling a monster, he definitely cannot tear it up. That Dante is too weak to run over anything, and the only monster he can run into would be the Utopia the Lightning, and that's gonna cost him four thousand life points. Talk about your not your average days of dilemma. And uh Apparently, his graveyard is so full of monsters, he doesn't have enough targets to actually fetch out. And with the miss of all those solemn strikes and solemn uh, warning mills, it is definitely catching up to him right now. Hmm... Not too much. He's in a terrible spot. He has to think clearly about the play that he is about to make. And of course, that Max C in hand does not help his case. Because if he tries to make a play, he takes 4,000 damage and then engages into a Max C challenge. I don't think that's uh, that usually ends well with anybody. And he loses the battle phase in this Max C challenge too. Oh, is he gonna do it? He can't attack the Ignister. And what, what's what's bad about this is that Dante will not be getting his effect. 
somehow that fog blade that that ignister baited into fog blade is benefiting the play. He can't attack it. He's like, I really want to attack the ignister right now. But Corbin, you know, knows the rules of fog blade. He's not gonna. He's not gonna do anything sketchy on that. He knows the only target he can hit is the Utopia Lightning, which is why he's thinking so long, so hard about this. Oh man, this is. Even if I was in his shoes, man, I'd be I'd be like crapping bricks. <laughs> oh, he's uh, is he going into battle phase? He, he went to attack mode. The only attack target is that lightning. Oh, he's gonna attack. Oh, he takes the hit. I'm like, hold on, I'm gonna use the uh, effect of Utopian lightning on damage calc, so you take a four thousand damage. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Fog blade. Okay, so it's a terror top, chains into maxi, normal <laughs> summons the uh the glove. Overlays. Then go into break sword. Break sword will be detaching. Or is he? Is he just gonna hold the board? Is he gonna detach? Uh unfortunate so yeah, he's gonna pop the fog blade and kill off the Utopia of the Lightning. Pass his turn. Top deck. There's a twin twister in hand. The twin twister is pretty useless, I think. Ignister effect to spin. Uh, Ghost Ogre has been activated and pops my. Well, the spin will still continue to go through. So, Break Swords off the field. Terra Tops off the field. Replay a new scale with the uh, s s Sorcerer. Of course, that was a uh, Key Turtle. Pendulum summon everything. Might as well just go all out now. So, with all these monsters out, it's pretty much game. And even with the fog blade, there probably wouldn't be a way to chump block it. Like all of these guys, he's at uh, two thousand five hundred life points from that massive hit he recently took. Uh, probably not gonna live through this. However, to secure the win and to make sure that I can get all my cards back, it's time to go into the Draco Slayers. The Slayers are coming out. You've got your Vectors, you got your Lusters. So first off, starting off with the um, Dynaster. Dynaster will be reviving the one in the graveyard. For, look, funny enough, there's still one copy of Master in the deck, so Master is definitely going to come out from the deck by synchroing uh, very soon into the Ignister. This is like the best way to actually like, just maximize everything I go into. And by synchroing both of the Master and the Luster together, uh, that gives fodder for Magister Paladin to actually revive a card sooner or later. Ignister's back. Ignister's brother, should I say. So it goes into a Master. Master will eventually overlay into with the Vector. Of course, that Lizard draws also at 2200 attack thanks to the Sorcerer. This, there's no way he can block enough. Now I can revive another card. This is just onslaught. Corbin scoops. I think Corbin played rather well for his first time uh, trying out the Phantom Knight uh, Burning Abyss deck. Of course, there's a lot more to be learned. He actually told me about the misplay earlier on in game, like uh, in the in the beginning of the game. He made a Dante rather than making a Levier, and he also missed search with the gloves and should have been uh, a boots. And actually, he got to set up a much more stable board and probably change the entire course of the game. But of course, we're still learning about the deck. And, um, and uh, I pretty much uh, got really lucky from Corbin milling pretty terribly. So, you know, I'm Tom Scrub. Definitely, luck originally was not on my side, but eventually Lady Luck uh, showed favor to me by letting Corbin mill out all his traps, which made me feel very, very safe. But uh, yeah, in this matchup, I think what I've learned is Maxi, Twin Twister, these are the cards that you want against the Phantom Knights. And Phantom Knights, well, you just want control of the board overall. And try to, try to get into that Beatrice earlier on. Uh, yeah, that's it for this duel. I hope you guys liked the duel. If you guys liked the duel and commentary, please give me a thumbs up on this video. If you want to see more videos from MST.TV, please subscribe to us. We have lots of great videos. And especially to the new subscribers that, you know, kind of subscribe from the giveaway. Yeah, I've been trying to work on MOS3 at the same time, so the video output has been a little bit slower. Hope you guys don't mind that. Of course, there's MOS3 will uh, generate a lot of uh, tournament level games for us to view and probably some interesting deck profiles as well. 
Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll announce MOS3 probably waiting for that ban list to come, that pesky little ban list that just won't come out. But as always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.